Lunar Knights here. We're going to be doing something a little bit different here today. With the long-awaited arrival of Reboot Camp finally here, for the first time since 2008, a new Advanced Wars game has at last been released. Sure, it's a remaster of the first two, but with any luck, it will be good enough to sell well and help kickstart a new generation of Advanced Wars games. As a member of the community and a fan of the series for a majority of my life, it felt like my civic duty to take a look for myself and weigh in. So, that's exactly what this is going to be. My thoughts and impressions on this release as a veteran of the series. A couple quick notes before we dive in. If my voice sounds a little bit off here, apologies, I'm traveling and had to record this audio on my phone. Additionally, in anticipation of the game, I've purposely done all that I could to avoid spoilers and leaks of how it would be changed, so I could go in as fresh as possible. This means I might complain about something at the start, only for it to be remedied later on in a campaign. Lastly, these are just my opinions, and my early impression opinions at that, so some of them might change once I've had more time with the game. To make this more orderly, I'm going to be judging the remaster on three categories. Presentation, which will cover how the game looks, sounds, and just the general vibe that it has. Gameplay, how does it feel to play, particularly compared to the originals, and then extras, which will cover some of the bonus modes and hopefully aspects where the devs went above and beyond to make this remaster excel by looking at what the original games needed and what players wanted. By the way, if you enjoy Advance Wars content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more. Without further ado, let's jump in. Up first, presentation. Advance Wars games have always had neat intros, and upon loading up this remaster certainly delivers. The intro cutscene follows the style of the original game, but injects way more personality into it by giving the Orange Star Commanders personality cutscenes, building up to Nell sounding a defense alarm to call them all together. It's a little thing, but I love this upgrade and it hyped me up. I'm content with the anime-esque style character designs for the commanders too, or at least the ones I've seen so far. The main menu is pretty standard, it starts partially locked and you unlock the rest by getting your ID tagged from the campaign field train. In the original game, you were presented as a character too, using whatever name you entered when you started. In this one, the game automatically uses your Switch profile name regardless of whether you wanted it to. And you're not really a character anymore like you were in the first game, it's more like the second game where you're following Andy and the other characters. I'm not really a fan there, but I can understand the change for consistency, since it was a little jarring when you went from the first game to the second game back in the day. Oh, and you can no longer endlessly scroll the main menu. We have some voice acting now, which is an awesome addition. It's not full voice acting though, and while that doesn't surprise me, I am definitely a bit disappointed. I personally find the partial a bit jarring because sometimes they speak, sometimes they grunt, Sometimes they speak half the line, and then stop. <laughs> Sometimes they even speak different lines than what is on screen. And our objective is clear. Yes. Yes, my lord. I just never know. We can now hear Nell grunting at us, though, when we ignore her orders in the tutorial. So that's, um, that's a thing now. As for the voices themselves, I'm divided on the ones I've heard. Some of them just aren't working for me right now, with Hachi in particular feeling really jarring compared to how I always pictured him. Others, though, are really good. It sounds like Andy's voice actor is the same as Ash Ketchum from Pokemon, and that is a change I didn't know I needed until now. It's oddly perfect, and whoever made that call deserves a promotion. The CO powers now have their own unique in-game animations and sounds when they are launched, which I guess is nice flair to add more personality to the individual characters, but I can take it or leave it. Neutral change. That said, the character animations that go with them I really like, and that new character style really plays to its strengths here. Next up is the music and sound design, which I'm pleased to say overall appears to be excellent. All of the old themes have been remastered to present themselves in new glory, and so far everyone that I've heard is really great. I like the depth and tones that the modern versions can present, and I think it's really going to excel in some of the more suspenseful moments of the campaign. I would be lying, though, if I didn't acknowledge that I have huge nostalgia for the original GBA themes, too. To that end, I can't currently say which game has better music. I love the old ones, and it's going to be really hard to beat them. As a veteran player, a part of me feels wrong about some of the remastered themes, but I know that's just me being stuck in my rut, and so I need to give these remastered themes more time to sit with me, and then maybe I can make a decision. But regardless of whether they're better or not than the old ones, they're still good so far, and I think you'll enjoy them. 
Unit sound design is fine. I have some issues. It's not something new players would notice or care about, but I think some of you other longtime fans will feel this too. The battle sounds are not simply upgrades from the original. Some of them have distinctly different sounds to them. A prime example of this is the anti-air unit. I love the sound of this in the originals, especially when you pair it with the devastation of destroying a line of infantry or sweeping away B-copters. It feels like when you're playing an FPS and you have a shotgun with great sound design and power so that it feels weighty and satisfying to use. That was the old unit's sound for me. There's a couple units like that in here that I think suffer from the changes. Alright, now it's time for the part I'm sure you were all waiting for. Presentation and the form of how the units look. We all had a pretty good idea of what to expect here regardless of whether or not you've been following the news, but how does it actually feel to play with them? Well, this is where I'm pretty mixed. It's not the style I would have chosen for these games, and I still feel that way, but I want to try and give this the fairest assessment I can because I recognize that style is subjective. Now that I have it in my hands, I can say that just as I anticipated, while you're playing, you do get used to a lot of the details and become comfortable with them, even if at the core, the chibi toy box style isn't what you wanted. The game board around the edges of the map is a prime point for this. I don't like how it looks, and it was one of my biggest complaints because I felt like it would really break the battlefield immersion and the intensity of what is happening in the campaigns. It was very distracting for me the first couple missions. However, once you've played through maybe five or six missions, you stop seeing it and you just see the map. So you kind of forget it's there, which is good. One aspect of it I can appreciate is that it changes design sometimes, starting out as cardboard and going to wood. I wouldn't be surprised to see more as I progress like maybe a metal border for the battles with Sturm? I don't know, we'll see. The unit designs themselves, they're mostly fine. Once again, it's not the style I would have chosen, but I like how distinct the factions are on the map. They match thematically among themselves, and most of the animations are acceptable. They're satisfying enough to watch, and I've had my animations partially on to enjoy them, but they're not anything that's going to blow you away with awe. I do want to warn that if you're a military or weapon buff, detail-oriented, or hoping for something more serious, you're going to be disappointed. The bazookas still wobble around like they're weightless, and there are a number of weird handlings that weren't an issue for sprites, but just seem very odd here. Oh, and the rockets fire more rockets than they actually have. Yeah, that's a thing. The backgrounds, however, are phenomenal, and I love looking at the detail in them. It's really easy to get lost gazing into the back and forget what's even happening in the front. Last point with the unit animations is that the capture animations weird me out a little bit. I don't know why, but this ain't it, Chief. Now back to the units themselves. I said I didn't want to judge the style too harshly based on my personal taste, but I do have some genuine criticisms here that are more than just preferences. A few of the unit types on the map are not the most distinct, and some of them are hard to tell apart. Maybe this is just me, but the tanks in particular really make me second guess myself. I'm sure this will get better as I adjust to the graphics more, but I've had a few times where I thought a tank was a regular tank only for it to turn out to be a medium tank. That is not a happy surprise. I know the sprites are different if you look at them side by side, but in the middle of gameplay they blend a bit and that is a problem. I've heard complaints about the appearance of black hole fighters and bombers being a little tough too when they're not together for direct comparison. I'd rate presentation as mixed. The core of it is on the weaker side for me. But I like the direction with some of the extras, like the intro and commander animations, voiceover, and definitely the battle themes. I award it one green earth. When you start the game, you have the choice between either campaign, but Black Hole Rising has a locked off look to it so that players know to start with the first. I like this feature for new players, and for returning players there's only a warning message standing between you and the second campaign, so you can skip right to it if you'd like. There's also a casual and classic mode for difficulty, and I'd assume you can unlock hard mode later. Obviously, I went in on classic mode, so I don't know what casual mode is like, except for that it says it's easier. I started with the original campaign, which begins with some of those field training missions again. Except, they seem to be integrated a little better this time around, and they've also been tweaked in small ways. The first two the game gives you feel like war games, since you're battling troops in your own style, and then the next couple are like the campaign has already begun. I like that the game hides the troops until you properly meet Olaf, unlike the original, which showed you Blue Moon troops right away. Some of the unit compositions are slightly altered. For example, Copter Tactics takes away Olaf's B-Copter, 
and the first mission of the Black Hole Rising campaign has both tanks and artillery instead of just infantry. It gives me hope that later missions in the campaigns will be tweaked for better balance and fun, particularly in the first game. As for the day-to-day -day gameplay, it's Advanced Wars. It's fun. I'm having a blast with it just like I always do when I play. If you enjoy Advanced Wars, you're going to enjoy the core gameplay loop here because it's faithful to the original. The AI has been upgraded, I'm pleased to say, and while I'm not sure yet to what degree, one major change I have noticed is that the AI no longer seems able to cheat in Fog of War. I did a decent bit of testing for this, and it's very strange to me, but a welcome change. It even alters how I'm going to approach Fog of War now, since traditionally the motto was, if you're not in proper cover, you're visible, and that certainly affects my playstyle. The classic settings options for animations are back, thankfully, so you can turn them off or alter them depending on what you like to play with and you can speed up turns or skip dialogue too. All of this is very welcome, although I'd recommend not skipping all dialogue and mashing A on the first run because there's some new dialogue floating around. This is a habit I personally have been struggling to break simply out of sheer muscle memory. There's also a few mechanical tweaks, such as a quick attack option that wasn't in the original two games. It's nice for saving a couple button presses. One last point I want to make here is that the new games are individually faithful to their originals meaning that one still has only regular CO powers, and each game has different commander stats. I was personally hoping that they would streamline this with the remaster to bring the first game up to the level of the second, but I can understand how much of a hassle that would be, so I'm not surprised they went this route. All in all, when it comes to gameplay, I'm very happy with the remaster, and I grant it one orange star. My impressions up to this point have been pretty positive, I feel. I'm certainly enjoying my time with the game so far, and looking forward to playing more of it. The extras category, however, is where we must unfortunately take a saddening turn. But let's start positive. Fan favorite features like the map creator, versus, and war room are back. We have versus options for AI, good old pass and play with your friends, and now even internet play. I know we were all hoping for that last one, and I'm happy to say it's here. Sort of. The map creator allows you to store 50 maps instead of 3, which is amazing. I can't wait to see what people will come up with. There's also a neat gallery that allows you to collect art and listen to game music at your leisure, which I'm a big fan of. I like many of the extras they put into the campaign, like additional quotes, a certain bonus commander, and the composition of your troops actually changing between units so that you can see they are individuals rather than 5 of the same copy paste and sprite. That last one I don't really think was something we needed, but it's kind of cool to see. Particularly since it seems to be consistent by individual unit rather than dictated by type or randomized for each animation. This means you can theoretically watch the same battalion through a battle and recognize they are different from others if you're really paying attention. This, however, is where the extras drop off. Most of those features I mentioned above have a catch to them, and I'd recommend bracing yourself for some disappointment here. We have a map creator with nice controls and lots of slots, but there's none of the extra features in there like black cannons that we were all hoping for. You're still stuck with the core four colors, so no using black hole colors to recreate the feel of a campaign mission. The map size is really small to start. You can make it bigger in one of the menus, but if you go bigger, you lose the option to share it online. Speaking of which, you can only share maps online to people in your friends list that also own the game. There's no hub or public server share to upload your cool maps to or download in a Mario Maker fashion. Yeah, pretty disappointed there. Versus Online play is hit by a similar strike. First of all, you need Switch Online to play with others remotely. No surprise there. Yet once again, unless I was doing something very wrong, you can still only play with your friend list. There doesn't seem to be any sort of proper matchmaking feature in here, be it quick play, random queues, or any kind of ranked play. From what I've heard, if you have a battle, there's no async option either, so you have to play live together rather than being able to take turns at your leisure. Once again, not what we were hoping for. At this point, we can only hope that maybe some of those features will be added in with later patches and updates. The storefront also has a warning that this game has in-game purchases with it. If we're really lucky, maybe that means DLC of a dual strike campaign, additional commanders, or even brand new never before seen campaigns. Who knows? Most likely though, it's just a warning because of Switch Online being a component, but hey, we can hope, right? So though there's cool features, the extra ratings fall flat compared to the other two. There are some really big opportunities here to give the game some serious longevity by allowing the community to engage and play with each other. 
but unfortunately it did not happen, at least at the time of release. I rate this category one bamboozled Ola. A lot of you are probably wondering at this point where my plans are for the channel regarding the remaster. Am I going to stick with the OG graphics or switch to the new ones? Well, while there are a few things I would really like to do with the new ones to give them fair time and a chance to be seen, there are two big hurdles. The first is that a lot of my upcoming challenge videos require custom game patches and altering code, something I'm simply not able to do with a Switch game. There are a few run options though that I have planned that can work. But that brings us to our second problem. I don't have a capture card to capture footage with. Everything you've seen in this video from me requires recording 30 second clips like the Switch natively allows, pulling the SD card, converting all of them to a format I can use, and then finally using them. It's a huge pain, and considering how long my challenge runs are and how much space the footage takes, it's just not feasible without a capture card. I mean, yeah. So for the time being, we're mostly going to stick with the classic games. Although if any opportunities arise, I will try to use the new game for some videos. All in all, what are my impressions as a veteran player of the Advance Wars series? They're pretty good in general. I'm really happy to see this release. It just feels wonderful to see Advance Wars in my Switch catalog and get to play a game that feels a little different after all of these years. Yes, at its core, it's still the same games. But there are improvements, and the new style makes it feel fresh. There are some improvements I'd like to see, but I'm also just happy to see Nintendo giving this franchise another chance. As for whether or not you should pick up the game, that really comes down to what you most hope to get out of it. If you're here for the multiplayer, unfortunately it's probably not worth your time. But if you like the campaigns, I think it's worth a buy, and if nothing else, you're helping to support the franchise and hopefully earn us a new game in the series. Lunar Knights, signing off.